So we're back then today with another in-depth breakdown from Marvel's Midnight Suns. We will look at the awesome Captain America now. I've had access to the game for the last few weeks because I got an early access copy. So currently I have all heroes at max level. I've got all the cards unlocked and upgraded to tier 2. And I've got all friendships maxed out for the characters as well. So we're going to be able to cover absolutely everything you need to know for the different characters in this series of videos. Now, just a quick breakdown of what we will be covering in order. We'll start off with an overview first. We'll talk about the character's general playstyle. We'll then check out their cards that are all upgraded to tier 2. I'll tell you which cards I recommend. We move on to stats. Next, I'll tell you which stats to focus on for the hero that we're covering in the video. We have hangouts. This is where I'll talk about the best hangouts to go to to maximise your friendship points. You get stats on the back of this. So this is actually really important. We have the challenge mission next. This is something you unlock late game for each of the different heroes. And then finishing up, we have some gameplay. Now, as always, if the video is helpful, We'll take the time to hit the like, share and subscribe button and if you want access to other videos in this series early then consider becoming a channel member. But let's dive in, let's start off with the overview first. So Heroes and Midnight Suns fall into three different archetypes. You've got your damage, your support, and then your tank characters. There is a bit of overlap in each of these roles, but without a doubt, characters will be best specialising in one particular role. For Captain America, no surprises, he is a tank style hero, so he's able to soak up an absolute ton of damage. You do have the option of running him as a brawler style character as well, although personally I would recommend going full tank on him. In regards to his passive, it's really great from a tanking perspective. It provides you with block at the start of the fight, and block every turn as well so it's really nice and easy to keep your block up at a high rating due to this passive. So that's a quick overview, let's now break down these cards. Heroes then have access to 10 different cards including the legendary card. Your deck can only have 8 cards maximum and sometimes you want to take in two of a particular card so there will be some cards that you just can't really fit into your deck at all so I'll run over which ones I find useful. We'll show off the tier 2 version of the cards in this video because it's nice and easy to upgrade them and we'll talk about mods at a later date because they are really complicated and I'm going to do deep dive videos for each of the different heroes talking about mods as well. But the first card we look at here all your characters have a version of this particular card. This is Quick Punch. With this one, you're doing your damage, you do Taunt, you do Quick, which means you have to defeat an enemy using this, and you should use it on the lower level minions to ensure you defeat them, then the card play is refunded. On top of this as well, you'll draw a card. So when you use this in a lower level minion, it won't cost you a card, but you'll get a random card back, and you'll gain one heroism as well, which can be really useful. So you want to have at least one or two of these in your deck. The Taunt on it, I think, is pretty useless, because you should be using it on an enemy you're going to take out anyway but overall these are definitely useful cards and once again you want to use one or two of these. The next card we have here is Punch. This particular one it's doing two times as much damage as a quick card but of course it's going to cost the card play. You can't get this refunded unless the enemy has marked on them. Also with this it will do knock back and taunt so it can be useful under certain situations knocking an enemy into a barrel or taunting a particular enemy but at most I would take one of these cards. I'm not a massive fan of this particular one. So this card here can actually be really pretty nice. This is Shield Bash, so this one you're consuming 33% of your block to deal additional damage. Now maxed out at level 25, I have a few prestige levels in them as well. Captain America's got around about 600 or so block, so if that's maxed out, that's you adding on an additional 200 damage to this. So you've got a card that doesn't cost you any heroism, it will give you one heroism, and it can do around about 260 damage, and that's without mods. So overall, this is a nice card. We then have Brooklyn Handshake, this particular card here it has knockback, if the target was damaged this turn then you gain forceful so you're knocking them back even further and doing more damage and then on KO you draw two cards as well. So if you're running Captain America as a character that you're looking to draw cards on and he's actually got 
a few elements of his kit that allow him to do that and this card can be really useful. You've also got the fact that it's got pretty decent base damage, it's generating one heroism and if you've already damaged the target then you're doing forceful knockback on them which is even more damage as well. So overall the damage in this can really ramp up for a card that's not costing you any heroism. So we move on to the skill based cards here, these are a lot more interesting for me. This one is called Dig In, it's an exceptional card. This particular one it will generate 2 heroism, when you use it you select an ally, you taunt all enemies targeting that particular ally, you'll gain block, this is round about I would say 50% of your total block pool that you actually gain from this, and then you're gaining one counter as well. Counter means at the end of your turn every enemy that attacks you, and it could be a fair amount of enemies, if you've taunted them all then you'll be doing damage back to them. The next card we're actually going to show you here allows you to regain your block when you're doing damage to them, and it's just absolutely amazing this combination. So we have the best defence here, this pairs up incredibly well with the previous card. So with this, Captain America gains block equal to the damage dealt for two turns. You also draw two Captain America cards. So the way this works is you'll taunt enemies at the end of your turn, they'll run up to you, they'll punch you. You then punch them back because you have counter. When you punch them back, you'll more than likely regain more block than the block damage they actually done. So it essentially makes Cap unkillable. Later difficulties, of course, he's going to get taken down eventually. But in your lower level difficulties, in your normal difficulty, he just can't get taken down with this. So amazing combination. You want at least one or two of these cards along with the previous one in your deck if you're looking to run a tank setup. This next card here is a pretty nice tanking card, but it does pale in comparison to the past two we looked at, unfortunately. But this is an, a card you'll get very early on in the game. So this is Tactician. When you use this, you'll gain block. You also give block to all your allies, and you'll draw two random cards as well. And on top of that, you will gain two heroism. So it's a nice card to use early game, but the previous two cards we looked at, they will replace this particular card in time. We finish up here with the heroic cards, this one is 2 heroic energy, it's called shield bounce, with this you damage and taunt each enemy in an area, so great from a tanking perspective, and you also apply one week, so if you damage multiple enemies, you will apply one week to all of them, that means at the end of that turn, they'll be doing 50% less damage, so again from a tanking perspective, this is really pretty great. The next card we have here is Spang, it does only cost 1 heroism, but I can't really recommend this one, at least not for a, a tank setup. So this one here, if the target is targeting Captain America, there should be a high chance of that due to the fact that he's taunting so often, then you'll do additional damage, it's about 2 thirds of the base damage of the card, and on KO you draw 2 cards as well. So it can be useful in some situations, but if we're going to drop any card, this is probably one that I wouldn't use at all. The final card here we have is a legendary Midnight Suns card, this is called Shield Charge. So with this you consume all block, once again I can have around about six or 700 block on a level 25 Captain America, but you consume all block to damage each enemy in a line and you draw a card for each target you actually hit. It's got exhaust on it which means you can only use it once as well. Yes you can do a, a decent amount of damage in this, but personally I don't like the idea of losing all block on Captain America, so this is a card that I really wouldn't use at all. But that is all the cards for him, let's now talk about the stats. So characters then have different stats that are available on them and through daily sparring, which is something you can research in the game, you can choose to upgrade individual stats for your characters. Now the stats that I would recommend for Captain America you focus on, they would be Fortitude, Resilience and Willpower. So Fortitude, this gives you a percent of your max health granted as block at the start of a mission, so this is fantastic to go off to a good start. Resilience gives you a chance to resist status effects, very useful because Cap will be taunting enemies so he's more likely to have a status effect coming his way, and then finally you've got willpower, this gives you a percent of your health restored at the start of each turn. Out of the three of them, the two that I would say you really want to focus on would be fortitude and resilience, but willpower can be useful on him as well, because again, he's going to be taking a lot of damage. But that is the stats, let's talk about the hangouts next. So 
So hangouts then are actually an exceptionally important way to increase the stats on your hero. The reason being that after you max out your friendship at level 5, what happens is you get prestige levels and you can continue to level up and get random stats for your character every time you go up a level. Now if you make the bad choices during this you can walk away with zero friendship points. If you make the right choices you can walk away with over 20 so there's an absolutely huge difference. There's 12 different hangouts available in total. I won't run through all of them that they either hate, like, or loved. I'll just tell you the ones that Captain America loves. So the ones you want to choose from, it's playing cards, reading by the fire, working out, and deep conversation. You can get to go on a special type of hangout once per playthrough with a character as well. When you get the option of doing that, the one you want to go for for Captain America would be painting, and that's how you maximise your points. I will look to put all this information into an infographic at some point as well. But that's the hangouts and why they're so important. Let's talk about the challenge mission now. challenge mission then you unlock at level 5 and you max out the friendship for your character. This is a puzzle of sorts and it's very specific how you actually beat it. Some of these took me a lot of attempts to actually do them so that's why I'm putting them in these videos to save you uh, a lot of trouble trying to figure out how to do it. So I'm going to show you the gameplay here. I won't narrate all of it but you have to follow this to the exact steps that I do here. If you do this it will allow you to unlock the Midnight Suns costume and also more importantly the legendary Midnight Suns card for your character as well but I'll let the gameplay play out and the next section we'll use to finish up the video will be showing off some gameplay. With this gameplay that we have here then, we have the standard team comm session. We've got the damage dealer, which is Iron Man. We've got your support, which is Nico. And then we've got, of course, Captain America, that's your tank. Now, I could smash through this level with Iron Man, but it is a breakdown of Captain America. So for that reason, the cards that I will be playing here, I'll play more defensive cards so you can actually see them in action. So that really is everything you need to know about Captain America. He's an absolutely exceptional tank character. I've still put some time into the other ones, but at the moment, I think he may be the strongest tank character in the game. The amount of damage he can take is just absolutely incredible. And earlier on when we talked about the cards, the combination I showed you when the enemies turn, you can take a ton of damage and you can also get blocked back at the same time. It's just amazing and it's going to be really vital when it comes to some of the harder difficulties. Now, as always, if the video has been helpful, take time to hit a like share and subscribe button and once again if you want early access to other videos in this series consider becoming a channel member but I'll let the rest of this gameplay play out so thanks for tuning in stay safe and I'll see you all again soon your spouse is wanted for war crimes <laughs> you guys might be accessories you know it begins Sure, 
Never too old to improve. This is going to hurt. I doubt they'll take that beating to heart, but we can always hope. 